It's officially been a year. time we got into porch roofs we got into shingling we got into step flashing and i think it's about time that before we delve into the next episode all you hit the subscribe button let's go get on the stick Smitty and I have become a pretty good team. To build this back pent roof, he was hollering numbers, and I was the cut man on the ground bringing him the pieces for the roof. Being able to work independently allows us to work much more efficiently on things like this pent roof. For months now, we have put a premium on finishing the structural and waterproofing portions of the house. It's time for us to start constructing portions of the house that keep with the modern farmhouse style, as well as the looks Amy and I like. We wanted to add some character to the back side of the house. We were weary of the back side lacking some flavor. We aligned the back pent roof with the pitch of the porch roof. This pent roof will not only break up the long flat wall, but also provide some cover for the guest suite windows. Once we finished framing the pent roof, we sheaved it with some more OSB. Then to complete the roof, we applied the metal flashing, caulked the flashing and shingles, and finished shingling. Next, we moved to the front pent roof. We designed this roof to be a lot bigger than the back pent roof. We're going to put a black raised seam metal on this roof to match the wraparound porch, so we didn't want this roof to be too shallow. Luckily, we got Juan for the day to really make the front of the garage pop. When he got to installing the rafters, he told me not to edit this segment. He said, I don't want you to time lap this. I want the people to see how fast I am. Look at him. This dude's good. He finished with applying rafter paper. It'll be a while until we install the metal roof and this underlayment will protect the sheathing in the meantime. With our house pretty much buttoned up besides siding and windows, we decided to tackle a lot of the interior framing. Our decision to work inside came at a perfect time. Remnants of Hurricane Ian hit Pennsylvania, and it was a perfect test for our roof. Not ideal, but at least we get to see if we had any leaks. For the framing inside, we started with installing the collar ties. A collar tie is a tension tie between opposing rafters that's intended to resist rafter separation from the ridge beam during periods of unbalanced loads. An unbalanced load could be heavy wind uplift or snowfall. This will also allow for a more functional ceiling, as well as make the space easier to condition. I also took care of framing the doorway to our master bedroom from the split staircase. 
When we finish the space over the garage, this door will go away, but for now our budget will keep this as attic space. We then dedicated most of our efforts to the master suite. Framing the master bathroom was our first time moving walls from their specified location on the prints. On the print, we felt the master bathroom was too big, so we moved it about three feet in, opening our bedroom a touch. We first framed the main bathroom wall. With this complete, we framed the ceiling with a little flare. It's hard to tell now what framing the ceiling like this will do to the room, but drywall will make this room pop. Then we struck lines and started the frame for the toilet room. This is going to be a good sized bathroom for the two of us, and we wanted a little privacy while we're on the toilet. In the master bedroom, Smitty explained to Amy and I that we had enough height in the master bedroom to frame a coffered ceiling. Because of the roof system, we already had a vaulted ceiling, but a coffered ceiling is an inexpensive touch that can really change the entire feel of the master bedroom. Only once or twice since the beginning of this build has Smitty put me on the sideline. He enjoys teaching and my questions continue to get better. But for the coffered ceiling, I was his silent assistant. It's funny, when we get into complex portions of the frame, Smitty would tell me his plan and ask me what I thought about that approach. It's really cool that he includes me in the plan, but I was absolutely zero help for this ceiling. Throughout the two-day frame of this ceiling, Smitty was in his bag. It was a blast to see this come to life. As someone that hasn't worked construction or been trained in a specific trade, it was fascinating pouring our ICF foundation and setting the ridge of the roof, but the construction project overall has been just as fascinating. Battling logistical issues, determining priorities, and structuring plans around long lead times has been a fun puzzle. An example of this battle is our windows. We ordered our windows 18 weeks ago. 18 weeks ago, we didn't even have our first floor deck framed. COVID has thrown a wrench in most of the professional world, but it's out of our control, and our only option was to find ways to continue to move the project forward. Hence the poly windows. The day before the windows arrived, we prepped all the window openings. To prep the windows, we shaved down the sills for any obstructions and papers that would get in the way of a good seal. Next, we measured the window opening and applied four to flash to all four sides of the window. This is a self-adhering flashing membrane that provides protection against moisture. The four to flash self seals around nails and fasteners for water tightness as well. Our last step is to add our butterfly corner. If you're going to have a leaky window or an issue, it will most likely be in the corner of the sills. The butterfly flashing and final piece that lays over is not something that is required, but Smitty and his guys swear by it. And who wants a leaky window? Alright, today's a big one. We got all the windows off the truck loaded. Today we're just going to be disassembling them out of the cardboard and, and poly wrap and putting them in the holes. Uh, we should, if we do it well, we might be able to get all these windows in in one day, if not tomorrow. So pretty, pretty freaking exciting.
windows delivered and Johnny and Juan here for a day, Smitty broke us up into teams again. Me and Evan, a good friend of mine that wanted to put in a day, were on unwrap duty. Our job was to unpack the windows, remove the sashes so they were easier to carry, label them properly, and then move them to the right locations. Johnny, Juan, and Smitty worked together to ensure the window was seated properly, then fastened the nailing fin and put the sashes back in the window. The rest of the day was rinse and repeat. We ordered our windows with black trim on the exterior, but we kept the interior trim unpainted for two reasons. First, it saved a significant amount of money, and second, Amy and I planned to paint the trims black ourselves, but wanted the option to change the color down the road. The final step was to flash over the nailing fin around the window. Some of the windows have large openings and we want to protect them as much as possible from moisture. In two days we were able to install all the windows. Everything fits properly and the black trim looks awesome. Next time on Let's Build a House.